talking to an, an NFL scout, the one concern about Nico Ia Maleava might be not that he's too small, which that was a, the con, that was a fair concern last year, especially first half of the year, right? Mm-hmm. Big concern, too big, too tall. Now I heard that about me a lot. Sorry. <laughs> let me let, let me let me explain this for just a second. I really to work in a sponsor mentioned there, Caleb. Thank you. Um, the, I there is, and I think that a guy that was tied to Tennessee in a weird way, Ryan Leaf, had this issue. There was too big of a hit zone. Yeah, he was a solid six seven. Right now, Nico is six six. Now let's assume that he's super elusive and super fast and. Uh, he, he he's able to avoid hits. There's still going to be times in which he is in the pocket and there's a bigger hit zone. The hit zone as it stands in the NFL is from your shoulders to your knees. Well, there's a lot of places to hit Nico in that space because he's a tall guy. Now, talking to the, the person I was visiting with, they said his elusiveness and ability to move in the pocket can negate all that. But let's say he gets six seven, six eight, which I've I've been told his dad is is up in the six seven, six eight range. We haven't heard of quarterbacks, Caleb, that are that height before. And I think there's a reason why. That is the only concern that he had about Nico after seeing him, Caleb, is that there is a rather big hit zone. Now I'm gonna make a a bit of a Vague reference you probably won't get. But if you go back, there this happens to receivers pretty frequently. Randy Moss is the exception because he was huge and he was so fast you couldn't catch him to hit him. But the Dallas Cowboys decided not to trade up for a guy named Jason Witten and they took a guy named David LaFleur. I don't know if you remember him. He was six foot seven as a tight end. Too big of a hit zone. He took too many hits when coming across the middle. So if there's any concern, it's funny how last year we discussed he needs to put on weight, needs to put on weight. And now we're thinking maybe he needs to start smoking cigarettes so that he stops growing (laughs) because you don't want to be 6'8 and standing in the pocket. And let's not forget he's 19. I don't know about you, but I grew another inch, inch and a half after 18 to about 20 years old. I was kind of a late bloomer. I'm not saying he will be. Everybody's physically different. How concerning could that be, Caleb? And I want to go to the message board and get your thoughts because that's a very, very big target to hit right now. It could get bigger. And if it gets bigger, I think it it is a bit of a cause for a concern. Yeah, right now, I think he's at his max. He's okay right now. And just for comparison, Trevor, he's about Trevor Lawrence's height right now. Trevor Lawrence is 6'6". Um, now, Trevor Lawrence is having some issues in the NFL, but I don't think it's because of his hit zone, honestly. I, th- I think there's some other more interior issues with Jacksonville. It's funny you say what you said, because I had asked one time, I thought, you know, you know, Michael Jordan ran a 4, we just talked about it, he ran a 4 three forty in college, and he's 6'6", six, yes. six, and I'm, I, I thought he would be a lock to be the greatest receiver of all time if he chose to play. But I think you told me his mass is just too wide, so he'd get he'd, he'd break his ribs going over the middle, wouldn't he? Trying to catch a ball. Yeah, I mean, if if you look at most of the great receivers, they're you know six two they're tall and narrow, six two six three. You don't see a lot of guys that are are six foot five. Now that all that being said, we're talking about the interior trim on a Porsche. Okay, that is a very minuscule concern, and probably would uh, be an issue in the NFL more than it would in college football. But I do think. It speaks to what you brought up so many times that Dylan Sampson's uh, now I'm Travis. I'm saying if he gets bigger than six, six, I'm not saying at six, six, but that brings up the concern that they might have for Dylan Sampson. That is, he's not a great pass blocker. I, I you really want to protect him because um, the last thing, obviously that Tennessee would want to do was for him to get banged up. 
And I think that Joe Milton, who had been a little bit hard on him, was probably banged up for portions of the season last year with the knee. That what game did he did he come out for a short amount of time? Was that the South Carolina game? I don't think he came out, but his knee was banged up a little bit in the South Carolina right. game. He it was, I think it was fourth. I think it was fourth down anyway, or there was a timeout or something where he was able to come back on. Uh, that being said, uh, Derek said Trevor Trevor Lawrence getting folded up under and coming back and playing was wild. That was. I thought Joe Milton was going to go out when he got uh, twisted up in the game that we're having trouble with. If you want to help us on the message board, you can certainly do that. Hit that like and subscribe button. We greatly appreciate that. And uh, we'll have some big news coming up later in the program. We'll also visit with T. Scott Jones to get the latest on the Tennessee NCAA case. And by the way, Tennessee's winning. Uh, this portion of the program brought to you by Don Self. Customer service still matters. State Farm agent Don Self and his team take customer service seriously for well over 40 years. They built their business and reputation on taking care of their customers in College Dale and Udawa, as well as the greater uh, Chattanooga area. DonSelf.net, DonSelf.net, right below. So my goal was not to alarm anyone. My goal was to say what possible, I mean, we, we've talked so glowingly about Nico. I mean, what potential pitfall is out there, Caleb? I'm looking for one. Maybe Travis is right when he says, give me a break. Maybe 6'6 six, six is, is just fine and he won't grow another inch. If you had one concern about Nico and I made you tell me because you've been incredibly positive and so have I, not just because we're being fanboy about him because we really think he's that good. Give me one concern if I really pressed you on it. About Nico? Um, I mean, everybody could say injuries. Travis says seven foot eyes from the winner. Okay, here, I mean, here. Go ahead. I like his decisiveness, but it's almost the opposite of Joe Milton where he's he's too willing to run and take licks. Have you noticed that? You noticed that in the Iowa game? Now, Iowa played a bear coverage where it kind of called for Nico to run more. But you notice he didn't mind it a lot. And like, I, I like a quarterback say, I'll run because I have to, but I don't want to have to. You know what I mean? Because he's, it, it, and I, I know that's a really, that's a really hard balance, right? Because we criticized Joe Milton all of this past year for not running enough. If Joe Milton took off when he could have, how much better would this team have been, Dave? If Joe Milton knew when, like, ran when he should have. It's a totally different football team. Yeah. So we want, you want Nico to run when he should, but. I think it's almost the it's kind of got it's kind of the hidden hooker effect. I felt hooker was way too willing to take off and take hits. Remember that when he played at Tennessee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Smoky Mountain Red says, uh, only concern is announcers not pronouncing his name correctly. Can I throw out another possible concern? And you tell me if it's stupid. And the message board, I listen, we're we're here to inspect and look at things. And there are times uh, there have been times where you guys have given me column ideas. You guys have been great in, in your insight. So you can tear me up if you want to, but I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything that could possibly go wrong in his evolution. How about this? His receivers aren't elite because somebody just posted on the message board that Squirrel White is good, not elite. So, not true, though. yeah, I don't know that it is true with what we've seen with, out of Joe Milton. I mean, Brew McCoy is elite if he's healthy. Mike Matthews is going to be elite. Mike Matthews is going to be the best receiver Tennessee has had in 20 years. And I mean, that, yeah, yeah, there is a, that's, that's just not true. And I don't, is there really a blue bear on my mug? Smoky Mountain Red. Sorry. Um, okay. So give me, give me oh, there one is. concern. I, I guess the, the only concern I could come up with if I played worst case scenario, and I don't think this is going to happen would be, Brew McCoy, not 100% healthy. Squirrel White isn't elite. Dante Thornton never really finds a home. Um, Webb and Nimrod, I don't believe, are elite. And the young receivers aren't ready. It's only other... Th Brazel does look elite, Daniel. You're right. And so does Matthews. That's the only thing that I can come up with. I mean, we're gra we're admittedly grasping for straws. Don't we get are. us wrong, guys. I mean, we're we're, also, we're admittedly, instead of just coming on here and telling you, oh, my gosh, buy your Nico jersey, and it's incredible, and it's awesome. We are, we're we looking for realistic ways, and we thought we would do this on the air because these are the kind of conversations we get to have with each other. 
I just when I saw the when I saw the footwork, not only his high school tape, when I saw the footwork and his ability to move in the pocket, I just don't know of anything. And Caleb, I get where you're going because you're grasping at straws like me to try to figure out something. But I also think he has a really, really good sense of when to run and when not. I thought Bryce Young at times kept his eyes downfield too long like Joe Milton and should have run his first year as a starter. And that's who Nico gets compared to, a bigger Bryce Young. Um, maybe that's it, but I don't see that because I think that he is he has a great sense of the game, which a lot of people don't have. <coughs> Joe Milton. Well, well, um, so this NFL scout, the concern with Nico. Now you don't want to. We don't want to sound insensitive. We root for anybody that's ever going to college. You always root for players to have success in the NFL. But curiously, just curiously, is this a bigger concern for Nico when he goes to the NFL, or do you think this is a concern for Nico when he plays next year at Tennessee? Because Hypel system, I mean, it's a three-step drop and get rid of the ball quickly, isn't it? Most of the time. Yeah, I mean, he wants to get the ball out. Um, now, Green Wave had an interesting point. What if Nico is so good that OSU offers him $20 million? That's about That's the, the most, most real concern that, that we can fabricate. Uh, I mean, I don't think Nico would work in Ryan Day's system, quite honestly. That quick spread is not because of his size wouldn't work. There's a, a little more leverage is required from quarterbacks that play in Ryan Day's system or in that spread, isn't it, Dave? Quarterbacks almost say you have like running back leverage, don't they? Like Tim Tebow. Yep. And Derek says Bryce worked the pocket like a magician. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that uh, Nico is going to be very similar in that regard. Um, I can I can pretty much promise you that.